so uh this is a video about which beginner books you should use to get you started hello welcome to the stream uh it's a sunday morning <laughs> the lights a little bright and i've got my coffee uh and let's let's have a little bit of story time text story time that is so we've talked about why you should go into web design or cybersecurity or software engineering if you wanted to get into tech and uh, why web design or, or web design is one of the fastest paths if not the fastest path to do that um, with cybersecurity possibly second if you hack the system uh, by doing something like going to WGU or just getting certificates instead of doing a full like four to six year degree um, you need a degree in general by the way uh, so that's covered in another video. I'm not going to cover that today. I do want to start something. I want to cover which books that we read here, uh, why I've chosen these books. I've spent many, many months, if not um, years, studying and reading the different books to find the best ones. I'm constantly curating them. And uh, I have actually even started several books and decided it was just best to annotate existing books that are used by colleges and other people out there. So these are the books, the beginner books I recommend. Uh, I truly believe every single technologist should read these. Uh, Learning Web Design, 5th edition, is the current one as of today. Uh, Learning JavaScript, a 3rd edition, and that's important. It needs to be 3rd edition. Linux Command Line, super important. It's the 2nd edition. And Head First Go. Um, head first, there's, there are ways to learn these things without using books, uh, but books continue to be the best way to get a consistent voice uh, that comprehensively covers the material from beginning to end. Uh, you can probably get that from some uh, video. Uh, my experience with the video instruction out there is that it's either coming from people who are far less experienced, uh, far less organized, or charging for far more money than, frankly, I think they deserve. So. My suggestion to you, and this is after going back and forth on this a lot, it might change, that's me, is to find the best books, the best authorities, and read those and look for as many um, ways to annotate or to supplement those books as you can, but use them as the skeleton or the structure and the, you know, the, main, the main meat of what you're learning. You don't need to go to college for this. You don't need to take a class. You don't need to go to a boot camp and pay a grand to learn the same things you can learn in learning web design combined with learning JavaScript, combined with Linux command line, combined with maybe uh, a view mastery course or something. Uh, seriously, you don't need to do that. Have the courage to go through these things. Somebody, People think if you pay the money and you have the quote illusion of structure that you'll be able to get through uh, stuff that you're currently afraid of. And I'm just going to tell you right now, it's not going to help. Okay, so that's a different rant. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of I'm going to leave it in here, but I do want you to understand where I'm coming from when I say that everybody should read these books. And if they haven't, they probably have gaps in their learning at some point. And so if you anything from FOMA, fear of missing out, there's a good chance you've got a gap someplace in your learning. Like most Linux system administrators that I know or so DevOps or whatever you want to call them, SREs today, do not know how to use associative arrays, not to mention how to use uh, parameter expansion with variables from Linux bash on the command line. People have been doing it 20 years, you know, who have been actually coding bash for KShell and it's had it all the time and they don't know it. And I'm telling you that they don't even know how to like force a, something to go to upper or lower case. So I use that as an example of you don't know Linux <laughs> and I don't like doing that it kind of invokes um, you don't know JavaScript which is um, an author that I do not recommend anyway so let's go through this um, learning web design fifth edition is the first one uh, this is from Jennifer Jennifer is very personable she has a wonderful voice uh, in terms of a writer's voice uh, she has many examples included uh, with her stuff in fact uh, some might argue too many her book is rather thick uh, it's mostly don't let it scare you it's mostly graphics um, and uh, you know examples she's very thorough um, it's full color it has a whole section on images which none of the other web books cover 
So she's she is heavy. I think I sense that she's more uh, into the graphics and CSS and, and HTML side of things, which is I believe why it's called web design. Now this is a thing that happens. People call uh, books web design or call the trade or the occupation web design when there's less JavaScript involved. So it's more HTML and CSS. And uh, we will not get into a discussion about the war between the HTML, CSS, JavaScript people versus the JavaScript, JavaScript, JavaScript people who would turn the whole web into JavaScript if they had a choice. Thank God they're not winning. <laughs> okay, I, I can tell where I am. Anyway, fantastic book. Um, uh, again, when you read these books, some of them have a lot of examples for you to do. Some of them have no examples for you to do. Speaking of which, JavaScript, learning JavaScript. Uh, this book has very little uh, to do. It depends on you to create your own uh, practice with it. And that can be a little bit annoying because you just want somebody to give you the exercises and you can do them and then you know, you've got it covered. Well, um, that's not the case here. So this particular one, uh, you want to make sure that you you know you're ready for it and that you're ready to create your own exercises learning javascript is kind of the antithesis style wise to the learning web design it, it takes a very terse approach and just covers javascript um modern javascript it doesn't cover all the historic javascript if you've ever looked at the definitive javascript book which i strongly advise you do not get do not ever buy that waste of paper um, it is way too old. It's too outdated. In fact, they haven't even updated it in several years. And the JavaScript landscape is moving so fast. I almost, I almost feel sorry for the author because he's like, I have been so good in keeping up and there's just no way. There's just no way he can. So Ethan's approach is like laser, laser focused on modern JavaScript. Don't, and it's like, learn this first. This, every single web browser does JavaScript this way as of this moment. Forget about all the archaic old stuff other than making sure it doesn't bite you in the ass. Sorry, I swore. Um, but, you know, and it's a very thin book. So, whereas where Ethan's approach is, he's, taken a, he's got a very thin book that just covers JavaScript. Jennifer's got a rather thick book that's got lots of examples in it. So in, in Jennifer's book, you're, you're going to be able to do her examples more. But in the learning JavaScript book, you're going to be not able to do any, almost any examples. There's almost none. So you have to make your own. And that, that's a little harder with JavaScript. So, uh, and I'm going to annotate these books and we'll go through them page by page. And, and um, uh, uh, I'll, you know, uh, this is my intent with these video series. So please continue watching and I'll do one for each book. Uh, so ironically, however, um, the first book I'll be doing will be the Linux command line. Uh, because, as I mentioned, the part one is really essential before you do any of this. If you don't know the Linux command line and you don't have Linux going, um, you're going to have to kind of stop and, you know, put your car in reverse and, and then, you know, do it and then go forward again. So I would just as soon do it the hard way. Some people call it the hard way and learn the command line, at least the, and, and learn Linux right from the front. Um, and then you, so that makes it a, a Linux based development that you're working on. And you can, you can apply the Linux stuff to a Mac or to a Windows if, if you, if you have that, but uh, I'm going to teach Linux first. All right. So let's talk about just learning JavaScript a bit. This is from O'Reilly. They've been around here, a very, very reputable publisher. Uh, I once had, um, multiple O'Reilly books. Uh, it's a famous thing. Um, a uh, little story there. I, I, I made a deal with my Nike manager after they sent me on a very wasteful uh, Oracle training. It cost 2500 bucks for one week, and it was like we almost learned nothing. I said, look, don't ever do that again. That's a waste of money. <laughs> I said, you know what? Give me half that money, and I will buy books, and I promise you I'll learn 10 to 20 times more. And I did. And I went down with like an unlimited, you know, like five, 600 bucks to Powell's Books in, in Portland, Oregon, if you know. It's one of the most famous bookstores. And I loaded up and I learned, I basically got multiple boot camp slash master's degrees on uh, public transportation, reading everything. And I mean everything <laughs> I read. And in fact, to this day, I have, um, I have fond, uh, feelings every time I see a bus drive by because the the bus and the train became my quiet time. I had young kids and I could sit there and I could just totally put my earplugs in and immerse in, in the tech. And I, and then I would go home and at night I'd, I'd work through these, these things. And so I'm completely self-taught and I, I don't know if I said that before, but 
I um I was a Russian major uh, who was interested in languages and learned language software, but I've always been interested in, in coding and books. And um and in, when I was 12, 13, I coded a lot on an Atari 800. Uh, but I'll spend more time on that later. The point being that I'm I I know that you can read you can learn all this stuff without going to school because I've done it, and I know other people have done it. Um, so there's learning JavaScript a very thin book. You'll have to do your own exercises, but it covers ES6 and ES5 up, um, and it's it's very 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 good. The Linux command line. This is my favorite book in the series, and if I if I have any fortune at all in my life, I'll be able to get William Schatz. Uh, on stream sometime and actually interview him. I think he has what like 10 followers. Um, I, I'll have to find his thing sometime. But he is one of the most amazing authors um, that I've ever read. And uh, this book, The Linux Command Line, has got to be one of the best Linux books I of all time. I mean, of all time. It should be uh, put up there with the rest of the classics. And it's the number one bestseller. Um, this is the only Linux book, if not Unix book, that covers Bash 4 Plus at the at this time. I have read through multiple books, looking at the end of them, short of buying them. I'm not to the point where I can buy it and review it. Maybe I'll do that someday. But but this particular book covers it, and 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 the O'Reilly books don't. So this is one case where I bought a book that's not an O'Reilly book. Um, it's really important you understand that this Linux command line book is about quote to quote him. And I'll read his introduction someday with you. Um, he says here, this book is for living on the command line, not just about bash. This book is a broad overview of living on the command line. Unlike some books that concentrate on just a single program, such as the shell, this book will try to convey how to get along with the command line interface in a larger sense. How does it work? What's the best way to use it? Basically, how to become a terminal master. And I think if there's one book that represents this channel more than any other, this is it. Because this is really the, 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 the gateway to a much, much larger world. Unfortunately, like all the books, there's a huge gap um, between the book and using this in and you <laughs> because you have to have Linux installed and they don't cover that at all. And he says, yeah, go make a USB and install Linux. When you do get that done, come back and read the book. And it's really hard to cover installation of Linux because it's so specific to a given computer. So again, that's why I think a stream or having a mentor can really help you get past some of those things. Uh, moving on, um, head first go. So head first go, when I first saw it, I was like, okay, what's O'Reilly doing with this, right? This whole head first shit. And um, I was not a fan, I'm just going to say. I was not a fan at first of this um, because it's seriously silly. And I'm used to the more dry O'Reilly books and stuff. And then I got thinking to myself, you know what? They're actually doing what I was doing on accident uh, to teach very young people. So it's a fact that um, associations with things, crazy things, keeps stuff in your memory. In fact, I watched recently watched a documentary about how all these people who do memory contests and they make stories that go with the words or the letters um, and they play out, they, they imagine themselves walking down the street or wherever and having this really ridiculous story happen in a serial manner so that each, each crazy thing that comes up along their path that, in their memory can be pulled up as as a fact and then that fact can be repeated and all you end up hearing is is the memorization you don't you don't see um the person reciting back in their brain or you know replaying in their brain this this uh, elaborate movie they've made of all these um you know mnemonic devices in their head and that's just factual neuroscience um that that's how we learn it's really interesting stuff there i won't talk about it more than that but the head first go books are specifically designed for that and they have a, an intro in the beginning that talks about that that I won't read right now because I'm going to read it later but um, it talks about they've taken that approach so they deliberately put crazy images that don't make any sense that sometimes they make horrible horrible puns and you're like oh my god really did you just say that but the reason they do it is you will never forget it they're like that worst wacky teacher you had but you can remember everything they taught you because they did silly things that that you associate with those things and frankly that's how that's my teaching style so while i was kind of critical of it at first I thought, oh this is so silly this can't be real um when i reapproached it with from that 
perspective, I mean, I taught infinite loops using, you know, coding nine cat with the kids or, or with really young kids, or we would, we would code, you know, uh, bridge keeper from Monty Python when we were doing Python and we would, we would say, you know, uh, what is your quest? You know, and I would show a little video and I would always bring a meme in of some kind. And, and I actually had, um, older one of whom just got a job last week. Um, they grew up and he asked me at one point, he said, you know, I really wish you had gone back to the, cause I started getting elaborate going back to the micro projects, these micro tiny little projects that had some sort of silliness, uh, the badgers, the uh, waffles, the waffles song, whatever associated with the principal. And then they could pull up the principal because it was associated with badgers or whatever. And not only that, they could go pull up their code because the code had been broken down into these micro projects. And that's basically what, these the better of these books do they break down the concepts into these tiny little micro projects um that are memorable and and that's important because you know the the you know the, the story problems in math are not always memorable you know it's always the train leaves it from so and so but or but but this particular way of doing it really works why go um go is the first um uh, compiled C compatible language. I think anybody should learn these days. It's 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 definitely going to become the Python uh, replacement, Python and Java replacement. Um, it is not going to become a C plus plus replacement. That's Rust, by the way. I don't have any Rust books on here uh, because that's that's more of an upper level thing. Um, however, I think so. The reason I picked these, I think everybody should learn them. Everybody needs web. You just need web. It's the most empowering technology on the planet. You can make apps with web. You can make blogs with web. Um, you can do anything. You can put your database out with web. You can post stats on the coronavirus with the web from John Hopkins. It's the single most empowering technology of our age. You must learn it. There's just It's assumed that you know HTML and CSS if you go for a tech, tech job. Um, and that you know the most recent one, right? Um, so JavaScript, of course, is everywhere. It's also on the server now, even though I don't suggest you use it on the server unless it's, you're doing some sort of JSON conversion. Um, but if you, uh, and then Linux, of course, is the most powerful operating system, period. There's just no, there's just no debate there. It's everywhere. Um, uh, head first Go. And Go is the up and coming replacement uh, for C and C++ uh, and Java and C Sharp and all that. It's, uh, one, it's the most modern of the modern languages. It's got the most adoption. Um, and if you haven't heard about it, just Google it. I mean, really, <laughs> if you don't know why Go is essentially essential to learn today, you need to just do your own research on that. But it is, and this, by the way, this book is current. Um, I was a little bit frustrated because it does not cover 1.413 and 1.14 mods, which is a big, big, big deal. Um, and they're even talking about Go 2 now, so I don't know how soon that'll come out. This book is dated, there's no doubt. But the great thing about Go is that it's 100% backward compatible, uh, at least in its 1.0 version. So you don't need to worry about it. The, the people that are making Go are not likely to pull a Python 2, 3 conversion kind of thing. Uh, they're just not because they live through that. Uh, Go, Go is by far my favorite language. Um, second to shell probably. Um, and I code a lot in shell. All right. Um, so that's been a review of the book.